XTM32 lab pin configuration setup. So in this video, I'm going to be covering how to set up the pins for your L4 32KC nucleo board. If you have an STM32 F303K8 nucleo board, you want to watch the other video. So for this project, or for this part of the lab, I have installed STM32 Cube IDE and I'm using version 1.6.1. If you, this might be a newer version or a different version depending on when you watch this video. So first I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new STM32 project. Depending on where you're at, there might be a window that shows some options as well as you can select it here. The most common way is if you have the ID open, you're going to select File, New, STM32 Project. So I'm going to do that now. Might take a minute or two for the board selector window to appear. Now a new window should appear, target selection. From here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna select board selector. And I'm gonna reduce the number of options as there's many ST boards that are available. And we're using the Nucleo 32, which is referring to the 32 pins. There also is a 144 and a 64. So those are just referring to the pin counts. But in our case, we're gonna limit it to the Nucleo 32. Now from here, I'm gonna type in L432KC. And you can see that this only option that appears is the board that we currently have. So I'm going to select that and then select next. Now we need to provide a name for the project. For this case, I'm going to simply add part one. And I'm going to type L4, oops, L432KC. Select next and finish. It's going to ask you to initialize all peripherals in their default mode. Go ahead and select yes. Now, depending on where you're at or if you've installed this tool for the first time, it may go ahead and try to install additional firmware packages and versions. This might take a few minutes, so please be patient. Once it's completed, it'll go through the same process that I'm doing now. But there might be an extra step for you if this is your first time setting up your board. So from here, I'm now in the uh, pin configuration or pinout for the SCM32 L432KC board. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to configure two pins, first one being our input and another one being our output. Now, currently our input pin has already been set up for the green LED output. I'm actually going to change our output. I'm going to actually change this to be a GPIO input. Once I've done that, I'm going to go over to PV4 and change that to be a GPIO pin output. As this pin will be connected to our LED and this pin is connected to the um, jump wire that's attached to our push button. Now, once I've completed that, I'm going to go ahead and check some more configurations. So, first thing I'm going to do, oops, I think the window collapsed. Oh, no, sorry. Uh, select System Core, and we're going to select GPIO. Now, here, what we'll see is there's some additional settings or configurations depending on the GPIO pin. For inputs, Obviously, there's an input mode. It's pretty straightforward. And then there's a pull down and pull up option. So currently, we're using resistors, so we don't have to worry about that. But if we wanted to, we could actually um, additionally leverage some pull up and pull down resistors built into the chip itself or the microcontroller, as well as I can add a user label if I wish for the auto generation of some of the code. So that's it for the input. Now I'm going to select my output and there's a few more configurations. There's a GPO output level. So this is the default setting that I want to set it to. So I'm going to keep it low initializing as well as there's different modes. We have push and pull and you can configure it to be open drain as well as we can incorporate a pull up and pull down if we wish. In this case, I'm going to leave the settings as they are default. The other option is changing the output speed. So currently I'm going to keep it at low. We can change the output speed for higher speeds if we wish. But in this case, since we're just capturing and outputting 
um, or just outputting button presses, it really low is perfectly fine. And additionally, we can also add a user label. So those are the configurations for the GPIO pins. The next thing I want to discuss is clock configuration. Now, I'm not going to go too deep into detail as this is an introductory class when we're really touching on some basic sub subjects. But in microcontrollers, we do have a clock or uh, uh, some type of input clock that helps drive our system. Now, this internally gives, uh, or STM, I should say, gives us a great way of visualizing how this clock is connected to different parts of our system and peripherals. It is very complex. As you can see, there's many different options, configurations, dealing with different PLLs, as well as um, different MUXs. In this case, we're going to leave everything as is, but I did want to show this to you as if we go into some more advanced configurations, we might need to make some adjustments. The fantastic thing about this tool is we can simply resolve any issues if they, the system picks up or recognizes it. Now, the next step is we're going to go to Project Manager, and we're going to leave, for the most part, everything the same as we do here. Um, there is a couple different options on code generation as well as advanced settings. So for now, I'm going to leave things set up. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select project and generate code. This might take a second. Now my code should be generated. So now if I scroll down, should see my main function. There's this how init, which is going to reset or initialize the peripherals and interfaces, and as well as the sysTick. There's something called a, we're going to set up a system clock configuration, and as well as initialize peripherals, and we'll also initialize UR. We're not using it for this lab purposes. There is later labs that we'll kind of touch on it as a configuration. So if we kind of look at some of these functions, they're actually a little bit lower. And each of those functions talk about a little bit about how we're setting up the clock and setting up the system. So you can see here, we're configuring the clock based off of that clock tree settings. The UART setting is kind of another one we'll talk about in the later lab, and then the GPIO input. So here we can actually see us setting up and configuring the GPIO for PB3 as well as for PB4. And we're setting up the different settings and so on. All right, so that's it for the pin configuration for the L432KC. Please watch the later videos on how we're going to write the code for part one, as well as debug and look at some of the different issues. I hope this is helpful, and if you have any questions, feel free to talk to your lab instructor. Bye.